So initiation into hermetics by Franz Barden basically tells you how to gain supernatural powers. It, I mean, is this stuff really real? So I first discovered Franz Barden's initiation into hermetics about five years ago. And before that, uh, I'd been into mysticism a good long while, and I'd explored different religions, and I even ended up living in a silent Benedictine monastery for a while. And so by the time I had discovered Barden, I, I think I was at the point where I could actually experientially see uh, what he was doing with these exercises and in initiation into hermetics. But it's huge stuff. I mean, it's absolutely mind-blowing stuff because it's as if all these movies and fantasy novels and Harry Potter with wizards, uh, you know, using the elements. Uh, Franz Barden's initiation into hermetics and I'll put a link to the book uh, below in case you don't have it. And he's got some other good books, but, but it starts with Initiation into Hermetics. And it's, it's incredible stuff, and it's so huge, and it's so mind-blowing uh, that he's actually laid out all these practices where you can start to levitate and move objects and do all of these things uh, and yet obviously the exercises are not easy and in fact they're hard in fact they're so hard that uh, you know it, it's tempting to you know just kind of give up as you go through the book you, you just kind of want to keep reading it you want to keep being wowed um, you want to keep getting some intellectualized knowledge of oh okay so that's the idea of how levitation is possible. Oh, so that's the idea of how there's telekinesis. Oh, so that's actually what the dimensions of the cosmos are. And, and, and it seems accurate, and you're hearing them write this, but you got to keep in mind the, the book's been translated, you know, a few times over, as, as well as some uh, help or interference, some might say, in his books by uh, his secretary. So, you know, it kind of comes across in this just matter-of-fact kind of way, and it's serious and it's sincere, and you can get that authentic tone, but it comes across almost, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're such huge topics uh, that, that it's hard to really get the personal, subjective, experiential quality all the time. You know, New Age books today may, you know, just take one or two of these concepts and write a whole book about that and all the things you could feel going through that process and all the things to think about. But he just kind of gets right to it and gets right to the exercises. And so when I discovered the book, what was interesting is uh, Barden calls the fifth element or spirit or even God and the Godhead, the Akasa. And uh, he's taking a lot of this from the East. Um, he's definitely combining some of the old grimoires and hermetic tradition and Western esotericism uh, with some Eastern stuff as well. And he'll even use a lot of yoga yoga terminology and yoga concepts uh, for the Western kind of cosmos because, uh, you know, one simple way to put it, and it's an overgeneralization, and of course there's going to be many exceptions to it, but one general way to think about differences between Western and Eastern esotericism uh, or hermeticism and maybe some of the more secret schools of Tibetan Buddhism um, the East is often dealing with a kind of non-being, an absence, an emptiness, whereas the West is dealing with a being, a presence. Uh, almost, you know, it's, it's almost like the difference, everything is illusion in the East versus everything is real in the West. 
And again, that doesn't always match up, but there's a kind of general direction in any sort of polarity or uh, dichotomy where the West is always kind of going to be bent a little one way and the East is going to be kind of bent another. But anyway, when, when I was at the monastery, uh, a lot of the presence there seemed to be all the Godhead, you know, literally, the Trinity. Uh, and, and it could very much integrate very well to Franz Barden's initiation into Hermetics and the Akasa or the spirit element. And Barden, Barden was in many ways, uh, well, I mean, I, I guess you probably couldn't call him Christian, but uh, he, he brought a lot of things back to Christian mysticism, kept bringing things back to Jesus and uh, in many ways was very clear that, you know, look, God Almighty, God of the Bible, God of Genesis, this, you know, this can be the Godhead in, in the Akasa. And that is the fifth element. Uh, then, then comes down to fire. And the light, I guess, comes from the fire or from Akasa coming into the fire. And the water at the same time comes almost in an, on an opposite pole, it comes down. So you kind of have fire and water. And then the mediating principle between fire and water is air. And then those three kind of all um, combine and start to form uh, the earth, which is your physical body and just the material world we know. And, and yet these elements uh, are all basically going along with the law of correspondence or analogy. So, you know, obviously physical fire, we know what it is, but what is the fire of the psyche? What is the fire of the astral plane? Uh, well, it's analogous to physical fire, but obviously it's not that physical fire. It's it's astral fire or psychic fire. And I guess by the time I'd read Barden, I kind of realized that, you know, at a certain point of relaxation and opening of consciousness and allowing, uh, you know, just getting completely unrepressed, allowing emotions to flow, it, you know, it starts, the emotions all start to kind of blend into themselves. And you almost feel like maybe they're even blending into the outer world. And then you get people, you know, New Agers or metaphysicians talking about energy. You know, it's all energy. It's all vibes. And, you know, that could sound flaky to some, but it's kind of true, I think, once... Uh, your, your sense of kinesthetics and consciousness and awareness uh, gains a certain sense of flexibility and fluidity where there is kind of a flow between inner and outer. And taking it one step further, you could kind of take all that emotional flow, that emotional energy, and start seeing it as different, you know, see it as, as there's four different aspects of that energy. And the four different aspects are the four elements we know. Uh, fire, air, water, and earth. Those are the different kinds of energy. And perhaps, uh, perhaps they're all planets. Perhaps those elements are all planets and they're revolving around a central sun. And that sun is the light, is the akasa, is the spirit. And the inner light is within all the elements and above all of them. But uh, Barden takes the four elements and says you can basically put everything into fours. And the other way he'll, he'll look at fours is he'll have positive and negative and magnetic and electrical. Uh, you know, I tend to think of the magnetic as uh, more negative. The electrical is more positive. And again, Barden in initiation into Hermetics, very just kind of cut and dry. This is that, this is that, this is that. And some of that just may be the translation and the time and, and, and whatnot. But I think it's paramount in my videos, my channel, and anything I do with Contemplative Light or Esoteric Workshop, I'm basically uh, always wanting to emphasize the subjective and the personal experience and how your own experience, how my own experience matches up 
to all of these ideas uh, because, I mean, that's how I'm going to experience uh, all of these things, all of this magic. It's not something like out here, you know, you study all these things out here and you do this skill out here. N you know, no, I mean, it's, it's completely inside yourself as well. And in a sense, it's more inside. In a sense, everything is inside and everything is the self. And the entire universe is within me, just as it's all within you. And you begin to see the self in everything. And I think that's part of one of the good uh, emphases that uh, things like paganism and, and Wicca have, have put on uh, the mystical process of being able to, re you know, whereas so much of mysticism will talk about transcending or getting out of the self, um, you know, the pagan, the pagans will often talk about going deeper into the self and finding the self in everything, and everything is the self. And you could say, well, that's really selfish, and 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 in that sense, it it would be, but it'd be okay. You know, I mean, it'd be okay because all those other people, they're part of you too. They're part of yourself. So, you know, there's certainly not anything malicious. And I've got another video where I talk about monism and how everything kind of fits together into everything else. But anyways, with Franz Barden and initiation into hermetics, it's, yeah, it's wild. It's wild to think you can start working with the elements and um, we're not talking about like, you know, literal water and fire, although he does have exercises with those as well and does start talking about the occult principles of water, meaning physical water, as, as far as it having these magnetic properties that can be very uh, helpful with impregnating water with your desire um, and, and, and almost storing and charging uh, thoughts and energy into into water, uh, you know. So, anyways, uh, th I guess the point I'm getting to is this: this sort of seems pretty fantastic, and yet I think it's all completely true, and I think it's all completely real, and I think all of this can be completely done. But I I think it would be remiss. To, to simply look at a book like this and say, oh yeah, that's the way it is, and Barden thinks that, and Barden thinks that, and oh, every everybody who's read books on magic knows that, you know? It's like, really? Because I don't see anybody levitating. I don't see anybody really levitating. I see some tricks, uh, but I don't really see a whole lot of people really doing this. Now, I'm not saying there's not people in the world that can. I think there are, but... Um, a certain sense of just kind of acknowledging that as, as we're going through our journeys and we're coming across something like this and seeing it as so big, uh, you know, it, it, it bears saying out loud, this, this is an enormous work and these are enormous exercises. And this is the power of the supernatural and the miraculous. And it's crazy to think that somebody actually went to the trouble to write all of this down so clearly in a formulated plan of exercises. But, but someone did. Someone did. And the link's below, and, and you can click on that. And I uh, hope you subscribe to my channel if you like some of these videos. Take care, guys.